Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled Whirlpool by Terence Kerwin. vessel Durban Star, carrying 10 passengers, is 300 miles from Cape Town. She is plowing through heavy seas and a strong wind. The captain turns to his chief officer. We seem to be moving off course again, chief. Can't account for it. Neither can I, sir. It's as though a giant magnet were pulling us northeast all the time. Shall I also course two degrees west, sir? Yes. And check with Mac how that shaft bearing is behaving. Aye, aye, sir. Mac, we're off course again. We're altering to two degrees west. How's that bearing? Not good, Lenny. Tell the captain I think we should slow speed by five knots. Oh, that'll please him. We're behind time with this odd pull we're getting without you suggesting we slow speed. Darn it, Mac, we'll be more off course. We'd better make it four degrees. That should hold us steady. Of course it will, Lenny. I'll let you know if the bearing gets any worse. You do that, Mac, and quick. You didn't need to worry about that, Chief. I'll be like the saying goes, greased lightning. But in the fancy drifting... Too ready dangerous. The bearing's giving trouble, sir. Max having to reduce speed by five knots. What a time to do it. Pity we didn't discover it when we were in Cape Town. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Chief? Look over there, sir, on the starboard bow. Hmm? I see it. I'll check it through my binoculars. Good heavens. The sea's foaming and twisting like a live thing. Steer ten degrees west. It could be a whirlpool. Get on to Cape Town. Ask them if they've any reports of one. Aye, aye, sir. Sparks, get on to Cape Town. Check that there's been any reports of a whirlpool in this area. Hurry, man, it's urgent. Right, Chief. Durban Star calling Cape Town. Durban Star calling Cape Town. Do you read me? Over. We think we've sighted a whirlpool in this area. Any reports of one? Our position is roughly 300 miles northwest of you. Over. No reports as yet. I'll arrange for a plane to check. We'll keep you informed. Over. Make it soon, because there's something pulling us off course for hours. Over. Will do. Over and out. You'd better hurry, Sparks. It is a whirlpool. It's only about eight miles off. I've just sighted the fringe of it. Oh, my, my blood's running cold at the mere thought of it. Mine's she... frozen. No reports of a whirlpool in this area or anywhere else, sir. Cape Town's sending out a plane to check. We should know pretty soon how bad it is and what it is. It's a whirlpool, all right, Chief. We've moved off course again while you've been away. Look at that compass. Good heavens, sir. The pull must be terrific, even from here. I know. Tell Mac to increase speed by five knots, bearing or no bearing trouble. We'd better alter course, too. Another ten degrees west this time. Right, sir. Ten degrees west it is. Engine room. What's the trouble now, Chief? You're to increase speed again by five knots. We think the pool is being caught us by a whirlpool. It's about eight miles away and must be a real beauty. We're still being dragged slowly towards it. Can I? You have to, Mac. Captain's orders. We're still not keeping a steady course. He'll break down, I tell you, man. The bearing could seize it. Me, if I put any more strain on it. Prefer being sucked down and no trace left, Mac. Don't be tough, man. All right. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'll take the risk and increase speed. Good man. Mac says there's a risk that prop bearing will seize if he increases speed, sir. Blast! He must risk it. He is, sir. Then it can't be as serious as he portrays. I know, Mac. He'd never risk breaking anything. I hope you're right, sir. I am. Now let's see how our heading is. It's holding, sir, but only just. Let's hope it'll keep that way. 
I've no experience of whirlpools. Neither have I, Chief. Although I knew a captain who lost his ship that way. Ship, the lot went. At least that's what the official report stated. Couldn't say much else. Nothing left. Not even some debris, sir? Not a thing to mark her passing. Let's pray we keep our present course. We shall. Let me know the moment you hear anything from Cape Town. Of course, sir. At once. Cape Town says it's a whirlpool, all right, sir. A huge brute, too. How far away? Nine miles now, sir. Well, keep us steady on our present course, Chief. Aye, aye, sir. Chief here, Mac. Go ahead. I'll have to stop for a while. That bearing's overheating something shocking. No, now, Mac. We'll drift towards that whirlpool too deep for the anchor. We cannot help that, man. Unless we stop that bearing, we'll seize. We'll take hours to fix him at all. Tell that to the captain. Hold on. Max says unless we stop now, sir, the bearing will seize. We can't stop now, Chief. Tell him to keep her going somehow. We'll be out of danger in another hour, maybe less. Aye, aye, sir. Mac? Aye. Captain says to keep her going somehow. We'll be out of danger within the hour. Oh, all right. Be it on your own head, laddie. We're off course again, Chief. Tell Mac he must increase speed. No need to, sir. We've stopped. I'll get onto the engine room. Mac, what's happened? The bearing? Aye, laddie. It's seized. Then unseize it, man. We're turning and drifting towards that whirlpool already. I'll do my best. And if I stay talking to you, we'll never get started. Get to it, man, and hurry. Aye, all right, I'll do that. And don't worry. The bearing seized, Captain. Then send out a mayday. We'll have to be towed if we don't want to be sucked down. Now look, we're drifting faster. I know, sir. Shall I arrange for distress rockets? Yes. Now get going. Every minute's vital. Aye, aye, sir. Sparks, a mayday at once. We're drifting towards that whirlpool. I'm ready to send off, Chief. I knew there was something wrong when the ship stopped. Mayday. Mayday. Durban Star calling. Our position is as follows. 310 miles northwest of Cape Town. Mayday! Mayday! No one's answering, Chief. I'll, I'll try again. Mayday! Mayday! Durban Star calling. Are you receiving me? Over. Propeller shaft seized. And we're drifting towards a whirlpool. How far away are you? Over. About uh, 30 miles. We'll try and reach you within an hour. Over and out. Will they reach us in time, Chief? Certainly hope so. We're drifting at about six knots. I expect we'll soon be revolving like water in a plug hole. We'll be all over in half an hour. Oh, nice thought. But if we get out of this, I'll have showers in future. Bars will remind me of just too much. But seriously, Chief, it doesn't leave us long to play with. No, it doesn't. About the passengers, Chief, should we tell them anything? Good heavens, no. There's nothing to be done. We've only got one boat with an outboard motor, and as you know, that's not working properly. The rest would be useless against the pull. A few hours ago would have been different. I'll see the crew keep the dangers to themselves and inform the passengers we're overhauling a minor fault. They won't believe it. It should keep them quiet for a time. Let's hope that frigate swallow reaches us before they do find out the truth. We'll have a panic on our hands then. Shocking thing when that happens on board. I know, Sparks. Keep sending a mayday. We may get an answer from someone nearer to us. Aye, aye, Chief. Mayday. Mayday. Durban Star calling. Mayday. 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 Come in. Mayday received from Durban Star, Captain. They're drifting towards a whirlpool. Their prop seized. Proceed. Alert the engine room. I'll join you on the bridge just now. Right, sir. Engine room. Full speed ahead. They're answering a Mayday call from the Durban Star. She's dead ahead of us, about 30 miles away. Right, number one. Full speed ahead it is. What's the trouble? Whirlpool. Whirlpool? I'll get him moving. I think we'll make it on time, Captain. I doubt it. 
There's a strong swell on and the wind's increasing. Poor devils, what a way to go. Boats and every means of saving life, useless, utterly useless. I know, sir. Thank heavens we don't get many whirlpools. You say that again, number one. You can really say that. How far is Swallow from us now, Chief? About 20 miles, sir. Nobody nearer to us than that? No, sir. Swallow was the nearest. I see. How are the passengers behaving, Chief? Not too good, I'm afraid, sir. I suspect it's more than a simple engine failure, especially as we're going round in circles. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a panic on our hands before long. In fact, I think it's started. They're coming out of the lounge now, looking pretty wild. <laughs> doing on the bridge, madam? And you, sir. Kindly return to the lounge at once. That's an order. Why are we going round in circles? You know why, madam. We've engine trouble and we're drifting. Too deep for the anchor. But why in circles? It's bound to happen in heavy swells like this, madam. It's nothing to be alarmed about. A whirlpool's causing it, isn't it? The sea's foaming and twisting out there. Would you know what a whirlpool really looks like, sir, if you saw one? Um, no, I, I suppose not. Then I suggest you leave the handling of this ship to me, sir. Now, kindly return to the lounge. I'll escort you both and talk to the rest of the passengers. Carry on, Chief. Aye, aye, sir. This is your captain. Will you please remain quiet and listen? That's better. Now... Be quiet, madam, and pull yourself together. Nobody's going to drown. As you all know, we have propeller shaft trouble. It will soon be repaired. There's nothing to get alarmed about. Everything is under control. Help is on its way. A naval frigate is rushing towards us. You will all be taken on board as soon as she gets alongside us. This unusual swell won't last much longer. When will this frigate be here, Captain? Very soon now, sir. Please remain calm and you will all be safely put aboard this frigate. In the meantime, please do not listen to rumors. That is all. I have to return to the bridge. The rest of the passengers accept the story of an unusual swell, sir? I wouldn't know. Possibly not. They were still pretty edgy when I left. I can't say I blame them. The swell's increasing in strength. The wind, too, sir. So I've noticed. It nearly blew me over out there. You know, Chief, I hate lying to my passengers, but what else could I do? In fact, in spite of all my soothing words, I still think they're at near panic. I'm not surprised, sir. I'd be glad to get them off our hands. I couldn't agree with you more. Now, you go and mix with them. Drop a few more soothing words here and there. <laughs> I'll be like a mother to them, sir. That's the spirit, Chief. It might help to keep them quiet a bit longer. How are we making, number one? A oh, good time, sir, in spite of the heavy swell, which is increasing. The wind, too. It's darn near blowing a gale. What's the distance now? About 15 miles, sir. We'll be sighting them soon. Keep me informed, number one. Aye, aye, sir. Any sign of them, Chief? Can't see anything, sir. Wait. There they are. I'm making good speed. Pass me the binoculars. Yes, you're right. They'll be here soon. Alert the crew to be prepared for being towed and the passengers to be transferred. Right, sir. There's the captain of the Swallow, sir. He's going to hail us through a megaphone. Take them on. 
They're panicking now. Can't you hear them? They heard you. How far do you reckon we're from the center of this whirlpool, Chief? Half a mile? About that, sir. Going round in ever smaller circles and increasing speed all the time. That leaves us no choice but to take Swallow's advice. I'd better go and explain to the passengers or they'll think anything could happen. Which it could. captain of the frigate Swallow. There's no time to have you transferred, especially in seas like this. Now, please remain calm. The tow line will be fixed very soon. You there, sir. Kindly go and put on your life jacket. That's an order. And it doesn't mean we're in danger. It's just a normal precaution at sea. So I repeat, remain calm. There is nothing to be gained by panicking. Now, that's all for now. Let's pray the tow line holds, sir. They'll soon know. It's fixed now. The swallow's starting to take this train. It's holding, sir. But we're not making much headway. The pull of that whirlpool must be something to be reckoned with. My compliments to Swallow's captain. Tell him to increase speed or we'll both be sucked down. Now, don't use the megaphone. Signal. Can't have the passengers knowing what we're saying. The last lot was bad enough. This time they'll really go mad with fear if they know for certain what they undoubtedly suspect. We're maybe losing the battle. Aye, aye, sir. They say they're already at full speed ahead, sir. I see. Very. Any luck? No, sir. Max says he's had it. But you know him, pessimistic blighter. Not this time, Chief. And we are finished if we don't overcome this pull. I want that tow line cut if that happens. No point in dragging Swallow down with us. I think we've gained some ground, sir. So we have. Signal to them again, Chief. Tell them if they can increase only by a couple of knots, we will have won the battle. Aye, aye, sir. Golden Star signaling again, sir. They say a couple of knots more and we'll be out of danger. Get on to the engine room, number one. Right, sir. What's the trouble? Tow line parted. No, and don't even mention it. I want more power, John. Can't be done, number one. She's already screaming with a strain. Try, man, try. Okay, I'll do my best. Not your best, John. Beyond it if we're to save this ship and ours. A couple of knots and we've made it. Okay, okay, you don't have to spell it out. Well, number one? John will go over the safety limit, sir. Good. By heavens, I can see the hole in the center of that whirlpool. The water's boiling and foaming like a demented thing. A few more minutes and it'll be all over. If the tow line doesn't part, we'll all be sucked in anyway. Even then, sir, it could be too late if the line does part. The drag will be colossal by then. Maybe it won't come to that, number one. We appear to have gained some ground suddenly. Small, I grant you, but something. Thank heavens for that, sir. Maybe the whirlpool's easing off. A slim chance of that, number one. But miracles can happen, I suppose. Anything new from Swallow, Chief? An increased speed to over the safety limit, sir. It's working, too, by thunder. We're gaining ground. Signal to them that we're winning and the tow line still seems secure. While you're doing it, I'll arrange for the passengers to be told we're safely on tow and winning the battle. Can't leave the bridge now. News has cheered the passengers up, sir. They're getting wild with joy for a change. Then let's pray they keep it that way, Chief. And let us keep winning the battle. We are, sir. Swallow confirms that we're still gaining ground, and suddenly. They can't understand it, neither can I, sir. We were nearer to the whirlpool. Ours is not to wonder why, Chief. 
Just be thankful it's happening. <laughs> Don't worry on that score, sir. I am thankful. By heavens, I am. How are we doing, number one? We're still draining ground, sir. A little at a time, but it's increasing. Splendid. Now, all we've got to worry about is the tow line holding and our engines. We'd better check with Mr. York. Aye, aye, sir. How's it going, John? Running marvelous, number one. Give it another few minutes and we'll be joining the Durban Star. Drifting and ready useless. I hope you've made your will. A cheerful broke, aren't you? Keep at it. Nothing else I can do, is there, except pray. Let me know the moment I can slacken off. You can bet on it the moment I'll let you know to the second. In the meantime, keep up the good work. Good. Murder to my engines, you mean? All right, Mr. York, that's enough. The engine's still taking the extra strain, sir. Excellent. Mr. York can ease off a very little soon. I think the... Oh, the cable's gone, sir. Then heaven help him, number one. We can't. There's nothing we can do now except save ourselves. Cut the end loose. Hard as starboard. Full speed ahead. Cut the cable, starboard tiller. Full speed ahead it is, sir. The cable's parted, sir. Then we're finished, chief. This is the point of no return, unless Mac can unseize that bearing. Get on to him, Chief. Aye, aye, sir. What's up, Chief? The cable's parted, Mac. We're drifting again. What speed do you reckon we make him now? About three knots at present, but it will increase. Why do you ask? Give me a few more minutes to unseize the bearing, Lenny. Come back to me in a few moments. I'll force the bearing in the meantime. It's do or die now, Lenny, as the saying goes. Do that, Mac, and hurry. Then I have no fear, Lenny. I'll work like a man possessed, which I've been doing anyway. Let's go now. Max going to force the bearing, sir. It'll either come free or cease completely. Let's hope it does come free, Chief. I don't fancy having to tell the passengers we're doomed to a watery grave. Mac will do it, sir, if anyone can. Let's hope you're right, Chief. Well, Mac? Going to try the engines now, Lenny. Hold on. Mac's going to try the engines now, sir. Then hold your breath, Chief. No go, Mac? No, Laddie. It ceased completely. Goodbye, Laddie. Nice knowing you. Same to you, Mac. No go, sir. The bearing's completely seized. And that leaves me no choice but to tell the passengers the painful truth. Carry on, Chief, for what it's worth. Aye, aye, sir. Please, this is your captain. I have the painful duty to tell you that the cable has parted, and there is nothing else that can be done to save us. Outside, sir, quickly. Look, sir, a gigantic wave is coming towards us. Dear heavens, it's heading straight for our stern! Riding this wave like a surfboard, sir. Then hang ten, as they say, Chief. Keep your fingers crossed, too. The wave's taking us away from the whirlpool and towards that frigate swallow. She'll be able to save us now if we survive this wave, as she's missed the brunt of it. How many dead, Chief? None, sir. A few broken limbs, that's all. 
It's a miracle that wave landed us gently. I'll second that, Chief. By heavens, I so will. So the passengers and crew, sir, by the sounds of them. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal. Mm-hmm.